It's a well-known fact that locomotive horns use a lot of air, but just how much air does each horn use, and what affects a horn's air usage? This video is an attempt to give a few simple answers. Now first off, what sort of things affect how much air a horn uses? There are a number of factors, but it all comes down to two basic things. The size of the air inlet, and the wear of the diaphragms and nozzles. Now when I say inlet, I'm not talking about the half-inch threaded port on the base of the manifold. Rather, I am talking about the small hole that feeds air into the chamber where the diaphragm is housed. The purpose of the inlet is to meter the airflow going into the chamber so that the diaphragm receives a constant even flow of air. Where is the inlet? On Leslie Typhon series horns, the inlet is cast into the base just above the pipe threads. On Wabco E2 and many other Wabco horns, the inlet is drilled into the chamber wall above the side air ports. On M horns, the inlet is drilled into the base of the head. M air inlets are either 3 16 inch or 5 16 inch. On K bells, the inlet is on the base of the foot. On P bells, the inlet is the same as on the K bells. On Leslie Super Typhon bells, the inlet is a pin that is attached to the bell that slides through the manifold and protrudes into the chamber. The hole in the middle of the pin is the inlet. This pin is called the dowel pin. The bigger the inlet, the horns becomes louder, harsher, and will use more air. In the interest of keeping the video introduction short, I have moved most of the information on inlets to the video description, but please check it out. Now I mentioned before the wear on parts. Worn nozzles and diaphragms will use more air than new diaphragms and new or remachined nozzles. Also, all other factors being equal, a 3-chime horn will use less air than a 5-chime horn of the same type. So in this video I have five horns, a Wabco E2, a Leslie Variable Orifice S5T, a Nathan M5, Nathan K5, and Nathan P5. For each horn I start with a 20 gallon tank at 120 psi and hold the valve open until the air gauge needle hits 30 psi. The comparison here is how long it takes each horn to go through this pressure range. I recorded these clips using two cameras, one watching the air gauge and one outside the car at a quarter mile away. Now, on two of the clips, the air gauge camera stopped recording midways through, so in those instances, I took a picture of the air gauge after I closed the valve. Note that on most horns, the air pressure rises after I close the valve at 30 psi. This is typical. Also, note that this is not a comparison of how loud each horn is. The wind caused several of the clips to be quieter than they actually were. Believe me, the Leslie S5 is much louder than the Nathan K5. Thank you.